right guys, today we're gonna solve the question that is unsolvable up until now. If you do bad wall balls, meaning not below parallel, so if you do this wall balls compared to this wall balls, what is the difference in power you are generating? So how much easier is a no rep compared to a full rep? That's the question. How are we gonna test this, Mariah? Yeah, we're gonna use the what, motion sensor. Two sensors actually. At the wrist to get. as well as at the chest. So we're gonna be tracking his movement and then with that, we're gonna compute the total work and also the power output uh, with both uh, different rep techniques. Yeah, so, <laughs> or I mean, whatever you can call that. Without further ado, let's see some no reps first. 15 reps? 15 no reps. 15 no 15 reps 15 no reps. Here we go. Please don't judge me. No judge him, he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> heart rate, heart rate 180. <laughs> All right, how long do we rest? I mean, come on, I'm not tired. We can go straight in. Or do we rest? I want to see to rest. I want to see. I cannot. Get. So the problem is, the problem, my max the depth. The my max depth is like this much below parallel. But I'll try. You need to do something else. Give yourself ten more seconds. Eh? Ten more seconds. I want to see good reps now. I'm getting more tired from making a video than from these no reps. <laughs> so let's see. Good. Very good. High rocks wobbles my ass. No, you don't film that. But no. Damn. No, it's a I'm joking. I'm joking. You stop making fun of her. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. That's bullying, you know. I don't I don't take that. Good. I think they were good reps. They were good reps. Take some time to get to the data, but let's go straight to the data. All right, so while we were at CrossFit Mayhem, uh, me and certainly Marai did not have the time to put all this data together. So that's why I bring you quickly into the studio to actually show you some very interesting data. Here, this graph is the vertical displacement or represents the vertical displacement of five no reps in orange and five full reps in blue. You can immediately see that obviously the vertical displacement is basically how much up and down the center of mass goes into the sagittal plane. And you see immediately that the amplitude is bigger in the reps obviously because I go all the way down and also the bottom of the squat so the lowest point let's say in this graph is a little bit later into the rep so that's pure vertical displacement what I want to know is how much mechanical energy and work I'm actually doing for one rep and maybe more reps and to understand that we need to use a little bit of calculations and some physics because total mechanical energy is basically the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy and potential energy equals mass times gravity times height so obviously when there is more displacement the potential energy will be higher and also kinetic energy is very similar there is also speed or velocity involved and when you add them both together you come to this very nice graph that represents mechanical energy and basically it looks the same or, or in, in general terms it looks the same because displacement of the center of mass is the biggest differentiator between reps and no reps and quite interestingly if you look at the downwards face of this graph both the orange and the blue which represents the eccentric work or the the work when i catch the ball and go down it is quite a lot bigger in the reps compared to the no reps similarly when i go up so when i come from the bottom up and i throw the ball up which is my concentric phase my concentric energy is quite substantially higher in the reps versus the no reps and if you add the change in eccentric energy as well as concentric energy you get to a total number in EULA in this case for uh, total work and that is what we want to know and that is what is so interesting in my opinion. I put them all together and for my example 
So a quite extreme difference between reps and no reps. We had 27 to 26% less work for doing a no rep versus a full rep. So that is very substantial. And not only less work, also importantly, the cycle time was 1.9 seconds in a full rep versus only 1.7 seconds in a, in, in a no rep. So when you take both into account, there is a massive advantage of doing no reps versus full reps. Before we go on to an actual example and how much this could uh, affect your performance in real life, I want to get you back to CrossFit Mayhem and let Mariah explain how the device can detect different types of movements, wall balls, but also burpees, pull-ups, and so on, and how we can extract or estimate power and work coming from just one simple device that detects your movements. Very interesting, I'll let Mariah explain because she knows this stuff much better than me. So Mariah, one question that many people have, and I had also in the beginning for sure, is you press start on your with your device on your app and it automatically detects 35, 40 movements. How did you accomplish this? Because that's pretty state of the art and I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, so the sensor is, is not only a heart rate sensor, like we usually say, right? It's a motion that's, that's sensor. That's boring, by the way, heart rate sensors, just saying. They're also useful, but yeah, it's a motion sensor, it's called IMU. And then the, the IMU gives you a signal, a motion signal that is very characteristic of the movement that you're doing, right? Uh, and the chest position is especially nice in function of fitness because we have so many movements that we move the whole body, right? Uh, so that signal, it's going to be very particular for burpees or for pull-ups or for thrusters. I mean, how the bur how the uh, the body moves in all the different axes? That's exactly. exactly how a burpee should be in a normal person exactly. who does a burpee. Exactly. And then we have, of course, some variants there. And since we're working with this variants, people have different sizes. They yep. move in different ways. That's where the machine learning comes from. It comes. Uh, so then with the machine learning uh, algorithms, then we can, okay, we can detect the movement uh, and then based on a lot of training data that we collected over years of research, uh, we can then detect very accurately, not only for just one person, but for a variety of, of people of different sizes and that use different speeds or, or different techniques. So you know then it's a burpee, the person is doing a burpee. How do you calculate the work per second or the work per time unit, which is power? How do you get to that value? Because that's super interesting, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So we don't measure it directly, we estimate it. And the way you do it is that once we know we have a burpee, we take that motion signal from the sensor mm -hmm. and then we say, okay, we know it's a burpee, we have the motion signal, we fit it to be able to estimate uh, the actual power output, right? And how we got to this was by doing a lot of trials uh, on a biomechanics lab, uh, where we can actually have the sensor measuring uh, motion, motion at the same time as you have the ground truth uh, motion capture with force plates a system that actually allows you to, to measure real power output. Uh, and then with that, we can have those very accurate estimations from the sensor data. Okay. That's super interesting. So now we have an accurate representation of how the device works, how it can detect your movement and also calculate or estimate your power and your work capacity. So let's dig a little bit deeper and use a hypothetical example to understand, to better understand how much more benefit there actually is by doing no reps versus uh, full reps or as to grass, a uh, nice uh, wall balls. Before I go into the example, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is me. Maybe you know that uh, World Science doesn't take any external sponsors because we want to keep our independence. And uh, that is why we provide several services to you that you can benefit from as an athlete or a coach. One of those is we are organizing three seminar weekends in the fall and also in the beginning of uh, next year, 2026, where we talk deeply about different parts of exercise physiology, nutrition, and try to transfer this towards the sports of fitness, functional fitness, high intensity sports. I think really if you are an athlete or a coach who wants to bring his game to the next level, 
this is something you cannot miss. Just scan the QR code that is popping up right now to see, to have a little bit more info. I give all the content as well as different locations and how it all is structured is on my website. Secondly, if you are not really into that, like the, the, the theoretical and the practical hands-on uh, practice, you can also uh, support the page and actually get fit along the way by looking a little bit closer at our different training plans. So we really try to implement many of the scientific findings we we have, we, we, we do ourselves, but also what we uh, read online in, in scientific papers and try to implement that into our different training plans. We have training plans more for CrossFit, for functional fitness, as well as specifically for Hyrox. And I think, and also we have proven that if you follow one of those training plans very well, very strictly, you will become a lot fitter across all broad ranges of fitness, strength, endurance, and everything in between mixed modalities. Definitely have a look at the first link in the description. I think it will be well worth your time. All right, let's go straight into the hypothetical example. And this would be 100 wall balls for time. Let's say you are at the end of a high rocks competition or whatever, in the middle of a long uh, chipper, a CrossFit a workout chipper, where they have 100 wall balls for time programmed. And you do it, Again, it's hypothetical, but you are a good athlete and you do it in 34 reps the first set. Then you rest 20 seconds, like hands on knees uh, recovering. Then you do 33 reps, 20 seconds rest and 33 reps. All right, so that is, let's say, our hypothetical example. And I now want to know how much more time you gain by doing no reps, like it's not legal, let's say, but you still would gain time and how much less work you would do by doing no reps. First, let's look at the time. We know from previous analysis that a, a, the total seconds for doing one no rep is 1.7 seconds, right? So one rep takes 1.7 seconds and then one full rep takes 1.9 seconds. So here I plotted all the different sets as well as the rest times. And you see obviously that it takes more time to do a full rep. And if you calculate or just add everything together, we're looking at 20 seconds more time to do 100 wall balls if you also calculate the rest. That is very substantial in my opinion. So this is not only even maybe relevant to doing no reps, some people go really deep, like really low with their wall balls. This will also increase the rep time and also just the cycling time throughout throughout many reps. So maybe it's a good idea to, to have a look at yourself, to film yourself and see how much below parallel am I actually going if I'm doing full reps. Let's talk about full reps. If you really are going too much and you are doing too much displacement, this might affect your total cycling time and your total time to do a certain amount of reps. In this case, it is, let's say, 20 seconds more, so quite a lot. That's one. But additionally, you're also performing less work per rep. So how does that look? And here I made a little table that I thought was quite interesting to look at. We have, as I explained, concentric work when you come from the bottom of the squat and you push it up, and also eccentric work where you grab the ball and go down. For the sake of this argument, I just added both together. It's not entirely metabolically correct. I will explain this in a second, but we're now talking about total work. And as I explained, it is approximately 27% more work where you do uh, full reps compared to no reps. So we're talking about no reps around 350 uh, EULA for concentric as well as eccentric. So these are exactly the same. As well as for the full rep, we're talking about just shy of 500 EULA. I'm talking about doing only one rep. So if you then calculate the total work in EULA for 100 reps, we're looking at 70,000 uh, EULA and 96,000 EULA to do 100 reps. Calculate this to calories because most people understand calories much better. One kilocal is, for example, what you see on the screen on your uh, rower or on your bike is simply 4,184 euros, right? So to make a long story short, the total work you're going to have to do 100 no reps, so above uh, parallel, is going to be 16.8 kilocals and it is going to be 23.01 kilocals for doing full reps. So that's substantially higher. Then if you want to convert it to the actual metabolic cost, because you have to think that a body is not 100% efficient. 80% of all the energy that I convert, chemical energy into mechanical energy, is going to be dissipated as heat. All right. So it has to be four to five times more if you calculate the true 
metabolic cost and we're talking about 84 kilocals to 67 kilocals depending on the calculation for the no reps and 115 to 92 kilocals to do 100 uh, reps uh, full reps quite interestingly maybe these are as i explained before a little bit high numbers because the true metabolic cost of eccentric contractions is actually five times or even six times less compared to concentric contractions so this is a bit on the high side but it doesn't really matter because we're comparing no reps versus full reps cool so again this is massive differences you're going to have to do way less work way less calorie expenditure and one rep takes a lot less time so it is double cheating in my opinion. So next time you see someone doing no reps in your local CrossFit affiliate or your High Rocks competition, send them this video, make them watch it all the way through and tell them also to like and subscribe to the channel. Many thanks to Mariah and the whole What Motions team to put all this data together. Very much appreciated and I think also very important for people to actually understand the effects of no reps. That was it from my part. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Ciao.